Father, we honor you, Lord Jesus. We uh, come before thee. We surrender unto thee, Lord. We, uh, Lord God, uh, lay at your feet to receive and to hear and to learn from you. To learn from your heart. To learn from thee, God. So we thank you for bringing us together, to bringing us, for giving us even the strength and the desire to come in thy presence. So we honor you for all that you do in our personal lives, in the lives of our children, in the lives of our family, in the lives, Lord God, of our spouses. We thank you for what you do. And then we are certain that the good work that you have started, you shall bring it to completion. So we ask you, take control of this place, of the atmosphere, and then speak unto us, for we are listening. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. The word of the Lord today that he gave me last week, but that finally we're going to speak of today is, let the Lord God plant you durably. Hallelujah. Last week he gave that to me, but as you know, he does as he wants, so he changed it. Amen. So today we're going to speak of the word. Let the Lord, God, plant you durably. Can we take the book of Matthew, chapter 1? We're going to read up to verse 20. Amen. Matthew, chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 20. No, no, sorry, Matthew, chapter 15. <laughs> 15, hallelujah. Matthew chapter 15, 15. from verse 1 to verse 20. Then, uh -huh. then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, which were of Jerusalem, saying, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the Why elders? do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. For they wash not their hands neither when they eat bread. But he answered, and said unto them. But he answered and said unto them. Why do he also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, before we continue, they were complaining about the tradition of men. But they could not see that they themselves they were transgressing the commandment of God. This tells me that men as we are, we are quick to establish and to enforce the tradition that we have laid. But the commandment of God, we kind of sometimes, you know, no, he's God. So God says, why are you transgressing, you yourself, the tradition, uh, uh, the, the commandment of God by your tradition? Continue, please. For God commanded, mm -hmm. saying, Honor thy father and, and mother. God say, honor thy father and thy mother. And? And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But, but he say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. What he's saying here is, they were saying that if you want to honor your father or your mother, let's say you have some money in your hand, and then you want to give to your father or your mother, and then they come around and they say, no, give to the church or give to the pastor or give to the Pharisee or give to the scribe. God himself will reward you. Jesus said this is wrong. That the money you want to give to your father and your mother, you cannot take it and go give it to somebody else in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's profound, though. <laughs> That's profound. Because if you can give to God and you cannot give to your father or your mother, you are a liar. Because Jesus Christ himself complained against it. Are you what I'm saying? 
saying that the Pharisee, they switch it and they say, as long as you honor God, you're fine. And Jesus said, you're not fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because to honor God, you got to honor his word. Amen. He does not want your sacrifice. He wants what? Obedience. Hallelujah. So you sacrifice to God, but you don't honor the word, then he doesn't want it. So let's continue. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have he made the commandment of God of not effect by your tradition. This is important. Let's continue. I will go back, get back to it. Mm -hmm. Verse continue. 7. He, hypocrites, where did I, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, Ye hypocrites, well, these Isaiahs prophesy of you, saying, These people mm -hmm. draw it nigh unto me with, them, with their mouth, mm -hmm. and honor it me with their lips, mm -hmm. but their heart is far from me. Now, you have to realize something here. The Lord is not saying that they are not honoring God. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I was actually sharing with uh, some brothers who came to have a, a fellowship. And we actually fell on this verse. And then I told them, do not mistake what the verse says. The verse is not saying that they are intentionally being wicked. The verse is saying, they are still honoring God, but with the wrong teaching. Are you what I'm saying? And by honoring God with the wrong teaching, their honor and their worship become void. Which is different from somebody who's somewhere in the Hollywood who does not know God at all and just pretend to honor God. That's different. The verse is not talking about wicked people intentionally mocking God. He's talking about people who sincerely worship, but truthfully are not worshiping. Because in way and how they worship is not by the commandment of God, or should I say the truth of the word, but by how? The traditions of men. Amen. Continue, please. Verse 9. But in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Hallelujah. As I said, the reason why it was in vain is because the teaching is the what? Commandments of, of men. men. Hallelujah. So when the person comes and then worship God with his offerings by, by, by not honoring his father or mother, he believes that he's doing a good, a good thing unto God. Hallelujah. So they come and they say, oh, Lord, you are worthy of receiving all this. And God say, lie, hypocrite. Get out of me. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? Why? Because they believe that if they just go to God, then, but God said, no, I gave you a commandment. And that commandment is that you ought to honor your father and your mother. Now, this is not only that he's talking about, but let's continue. And verse 10. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Mm -hmm. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Now you got to get an understanding over here. They came talking about washing of the hands to eat. And Jesus Christ switched the topic <laughs> and went somewhere else. He hid them there and comes back. What does it mean? It means that whatever the Lord is saying right here concerns all part of our lives. This does not concern only the washing of the hands. Are you following what I'm saying? So, what he's going to say here concerns all part of our lives, not only the washing of the ends, even though the issue that they brought was the washing of the ends. Amen? Continue, please. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? 
But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now, you got to understand this little portion. There came the disciple, and they said, Jesus Christ, the way you spoke to the elders, you spoke to the ancient, <laughs> he was not right. But the question is not whether he was right. The question was whether he was true. Because you see, in the world, they want you to be what they call politically correct. If you want to say this, try to say it in a certain way that will not... But truth itself hurts. Are, are you what I'm saying? Even if you say the truth with a, a smile, truth itself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the issue is not how you say, the issue is the truth that hits. So for us to be able to honor God, to be able to love him, and to be able to be planted by him, because he's talking about every plant that is not planted by the Father will be rooted up. What does it mean? Well, when you go in the book of John chapter 15, he talks about it. He says he is the sermant, that we are the branches, right? So that's kind of like a plant. That every branches that is connected to him bear it fruit. Hallelujah. So what he's saying is that if you are in the Lord and you don't bear fruit, your plant is corrupted. Hallelujah. So that if everything you do in the name of the Lord, whatever you do, even if it looks beautiful like the Pharisee and the scribe were doing, but if inside there is not the obedience to God, it's corrupted. It's not a plan by the Lord. Hallelujah. So every plant, every doctrine, every teaching, every mindset, Every behavior, every understanding that God did not give unto us cannot lead us to him. And he goes further, he says what? Verse 14. Verse 14. Let them alone. <laughs> they be ay, 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 the ay, ay, ears ay. of the blind. Say, what, what he say in English here, in, in French, we say, je m'en fous. <laughs> In a in a in a in a coast, over there we use language like a um how is that? You vois le parler uh, le parler de rue comment on appelle ça? The slang the slang slang tongue. Si quelqu'un si if somebody comes to say, hey, do you know that what you said the person was not and you say Jangaba. You say, this is my problem. No, it's not my problem. So the Lord Jesus tells them after they come and they say, but Lord, the way you spoke to the Pharisee, they were not happy about it. He said the problem why they were not happy is not because I lied, but it's because they want to subject, subdue the people to follow their tradition instead of following the ways of the Lord. Because imagine, the Pharisee with the long robe, he loves the praise of men. Hallelujah. The Bible says that uh, he loves to enter the house of uh, women and of people to just receive the praise. So when people come and then honor them, they feel like they are important. Now you're going to tell them that the people cannot honor them with the money that they were supposed to give to the father. Ah! <laughs> are you what I'm saying? So in a simple point, he says, let them alone. For they are blind leaders. Hallelujah. I do not want to be a blind leader. Amen? He said, they are blind leaders. But here's the problem. They are blind leaders of? Of the blind. Are you know what I'm saying? If, if you are a leader, you're blind. And then you are a follower, you're blind. 
Oh God. <laughs> so there are blind leaders of the blind. And if what? And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. What it means is that we have problems all the time. <laughs> that we suffer loss all the time. That we lose peace all the time. Hallelujah. Because Christ says that in him we have peace. In him we have comfort. In him we have salvation. In him we have restoration. So if we are not in the ways of Christ, we know we cannot have the peace. We know we cannot have the restoration. Amen? But he says, go, go ahead, verse 15. Verse Read 15. First, mm -hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us his parable, this parable. Verse 16. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not he yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drove? But those but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the, the heart, and they defile the man. 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These, these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defile not a man. Hallelujah. Amen. Go back to verse 6 for me. And get that for me in Amplify. Verse 6, yeah. We're going to start from there. Amplify version. Thank you. Matthew chapter uh, 15, mm -hmm. verse 6. He is not to honor his father or his mother by helping them with their needs. Is that clear? Amen? To help your father and, the, and your mother in the need. If you skip your mother and your father and you go to the Lord, you have done sacrifice. But you haven't done obedience. Hallelujah. Continue. So by this you have invalidated the word of God depriving it of force and authority and making it of no effect for the sake of your tradition handed down by the elders. This, as I say, cover everything in our lives. Let's say, for instance, in, in some culture, the woman has to... No, not the woman. In some culture, when they need to marry, they take the child... A little, a little girl, and they go marry it to the man. And sometimes the man is even a old man. He can be even 50 years old, and they bring a, a girl of nine years old. You see what I'm saying? Now, this culture, for them, is right. The thing, that's the way he ought to go. And then, if you tell them, we call it what? In, in America, we call it uh, what? Pedophilia. Pedoph because that's the definition of pedophilia. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? But in the culture, because they have quote unquote sanctified pedophilia, they believe it's right. Now, a person who has 50 years old, who marry a girl who has nine years old, such like uh, Muhammad, by doing so, how can you be of God? Because here's the thing. The word of God says that the culture void the word of God in you. Are you what I'm saying? So even if you have swallowed the word of God, but in the same time you swallow also the culture, both cannot be inside. So the word of God becomes voided by our you feed. So the thought of your mind voids the power of God that is in you. Through the culture. Now you got to ask yourself, Lord, 
which type of tradition and culture that is handed down by men that is causing me not to be effective that is in my life. Because that plant, you haven't planted it. You got to remember, when the plant is planted by the Lord, it bears. So if the plant that is planted does not bear fruit, then you know it's not from the Lord. Hallelujah. So you got now to ask, Lord, show me those things in me who do not bear fruit. Because he says, the desire of Christ is to plant us durably. Um, David said so. He said, whosoever is planted by the, no, no, by the rivers, hallelujah, cannot go what? Cannot wither, cannot go dry. So if your life is not planted correctly by the Lord, but is it planted and then inside there are some kind of a cultural and traditional. Huh? Yeah, rocks are mixed. Mix. You void the word of God with the tradition. That, that's, a, that's a powerful word right there. Let's say, for instance, some people, they go and they say, ah, we need to marry our daughter to the man. But we need to pour the drink for the ancestors. Aye. That ancestor, <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> he's finished. <laughs> he doesn't even know what's going on. <laughs> He has no clue. Meaning, by honoring something that is vain, you are causing the power of God in your life to be vain. Since both of them cannot, but some people, some of them, they are priests or pastors. And they go and they say, Oh, by the power of the Lord. We're offering the drink to the ancestor. Ah! <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? So those plants were not planted by God. Those ideas were not planted by God. Those ways were not planted by God. So now we have to identify, Lord, which are the things that were not planted by you in me? I do not need it. Because I need to see fruit on what you plant. For you said, if you plant, it will bear fruit. Whosoever is a branch on you and bear fruit, he gets what? Prunes. Amen? So, in another word, when you do well in God, he slap you. <laughs> so you will do even well, well, well. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, my, my words can go in the dictionary. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, <laughs> amen. Yeah. Very soon you will see in the dictionary, well. Uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God is teaching us that he wants to plant us by the river. Where we will not go dry in our resources to love him. Listen, the way you love God is not based on the how you feel it, right? Because you know, if it comes to feeling, you're feeling like, 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ, amen. You wake up in the morning with fire, and by the time you get at 9 a.m., fire is gone. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> Like, you can be on your bed and you feel like praying. And on your bed, you're like, hey, katabara, kateta, poroso, katabara. When you wake up, finish. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? The fire is quenched. <laughs> Amen. So because we cannot function with emotions and feeling, we got to ask the Lord, 
What do we need from you in order to be consistent? We need consistency. If I say yay to do this today in you, I must do it until I bring it to completion. Are you know what I'm saying? I always say this. To know what type of spirit that lays in you or what type of plant you have in you, I always said, take attention to the little things that you do inside the house. I say it is a thermometer to help you see. Let's take an example. Let's say you you start you start cleaning the stove. You do half, and you left the rest, and then you go, and you forget that you were doing the stove. And then you do the toilet, you do half, you let the rest. And then you remember uh, you had to do the, the, the dishes. And then you do half, you let the rest. So by the time you finish your day, <laughs> hallelujah. By the time you finish your day, your house ain't clean yet. And yet you have cleaned your house the whole day. <laughs> this is a thermometer. Because he might seem irrelevant. But the Lord Jesus says it is in the irrelevant things that we see who is faithful. Hallelujah. That's why when you see in your life that you start something, you don't get it done. You start something, you don't get it done. You start something, you do, then you know there is something there that I need to get out. Consistency into what God says and does and speaks of to us. Help us be planted by the river side. Because I can tell you, even if you don't seek trouble, trouble will seek you. Like you can be holy the whole day. Like you can stay in your room just like this 24-7. Trouble, we found you there. You can live a righteous life and you make everything possible to have problem with nobody. But somebody will have problem with you. <laughs> somebody will look at you. We say, why are you smiling too much? Am I lying? You thinking that I, because I know the Lord, I have the joy of the Lord. That joy of the Lord is a problem for somebody. Hallelujah. So however you do, regardless on how you do, you must make sure that you are planted by the riverside of God. Because when the time of trouble comes, you get dry. But it is when you are planted that you rekindle. And the Lord says he wants to plant us. If he says every plant that is not planted of the Father, he uproot, it's because he intends to take care of the one that is planted by him. Uh, does it make sense? Hallelujah. Verse Verse 6, read again. Verse 6, he is not to honor his father or his mother by helping them with their need. So by this you have invalidated the word of God, depriving it of force and authority and making it of no that effect. That word is strong. We all know that the word of God is powerful. But over here, in your life. Can you imagine? The power of the word of God. In your life. Can become void. Continue. For the sake of your tradition. Handed down by the elders. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. You hypocrites. Play actors. Pretenders. 
Hardly did Isaiah prophesy of you. You know, that's why I don't like my children to always keep around and say, let's I pretend we are. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> because yeah, you got to be. You cannot pretend to be. Hallelujah. So he said, you hypocrites, play actors and pretend. Well, what is a play actors? Have you ever watched a good movie? Let, let's take the movie, uh, what we call it, The Chosen. The guy who plays The Chosen is a Catholic. <laughs> Meaning, he knows Christ Alf since he goes through who? Mary. But when he plays Jesus, <laughs> you watch and you're like, wow. Are you what I'm saying? But yet, that Jesus is playing <laughs> has not circumcised his heart yet, so he will stop going to marry. D does it make sense? He's able to play Jesus, but he's not able to actually know Jesus because if he knew Jesus, he cannot continue to pray somebody else but Christ. Pretender, like uh, the the seventh son of. When they come in the scene, you devil get out! And the devil say, "Wait, I'm coming." <laughs> but here's the thing: the devil actually gets out, but he does not get out to leave. He gets out to beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> And goes back in. <laughs> Hallelujah. May all this is because we are not planted by the Lord. We know the fruit of the Spirit, right? Now, patience is not easy. Huh. You ask me. Patient, because patient does not have a expiration cap. Uh -huh. there, there is no patience that is manufactured. And then you see, uh, best buy. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? So you will think, oh Lord, I have been patient enough. Then you know your fruit is corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> because patience does not have a cap. Imagine the Lord Jesus on the cross. People are insulting him and then slapping him and spitting on him. And then there is a guy, even in his death, will take again the, the, oh golly, the spear to purse him. He'll be like, so but the Lord is like this. By the time the guy was like, uh, hey, you, you stop it now. <laughs> it's enough. You beat me since a pilot. Even here again, you want to piss me. <laughs> what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Let me die in peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those of you who don't understand the way of saying it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Patience does not have a cap. The Christian says, You have tried my patience is, is because of the Lord. Then you know. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? If I was not a Christian, I would have slapped you. <laughs> ah. Then your fruit is not the Holy Ghost. Your fruit, it comes from the goat, <laughs> not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was reading the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, talking about love, and then he said, love bear all. I said, ah, ah. <laughs> what type of love is this? That looks like a love that is uh, stupid. <laughs> I know I, I, what I'm saying. Because at the moment of time, I will say, okay, enough is enough. But he said, no. You are supposed to have the fruit of 
love. Now, when God plants the fruit of love or the tree of love or the plant of love in you by the river, and then you see that it's getting dry, he does what? Rep eh? Replenish. So you cannot go dry. Because throughout your day, people will suck out of you life. Like they will pump it. Like, like, like a, a mosquito on your skin. Like, no, no, the mosquito on the skin of my wife. <laughs> because we can, we can all be sitting in the same place. We are 25. And after, out of 25, she's the only one. She's like, ay, 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 you don't feel it. <laughs> she's the only one who's the mosquito like the skin. <laughs> For this reason, she doesn't want to go to Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So without you be able to say, Lord, if there is something in me that is causing me not to be effective, not to develop the fruit that is expected of you, because it is easy to, let me put it there down. It is easy to remember all the rules and regulations that we have given to somebody else. Are you what I'm saying? But it's quicker to forget the one that the Lord gave to us. So the Lord has to continually remind us all the time. All the time. Have you seen that in the word of God? He always said to the people, remember, remember, remember. They were cutting, getting out of Egypt. They, they, were, they, they just passed the Red Sea. And right at the Red Sea, they started complaining there. <laughs> they, for, they forgot that they, they just got delivered. Remember. Remember. And the second thing is Shema. Which is, listen. 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 So the Lord continually will do so because the span of our memory in the things of God works like you know what the Lord tells you to do. But by the time you got to do what he tells you to do, you forgot, you become like a child. And you go back, uh, Daddy, what did you say again? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we have to continually remember who says it, the Lord. It tells to Joshua. It says in the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It said, this book of the law shall be what? Continually on your mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein when? Day and night. Because he knows when Joshua started meditating on the day, <laughs> and he didn't do on the night, by the time the night arrived, he forgot what he did on the day. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, by doing so, you will make your way, you will have good success and make your way prosperous. We need to be planted by the Lord. We need to be planted by the Lord so that the, in us, the traditions and the cultures and the thoughts of men are not our portion. In the world, they will tell you, listen, somebody can have an issue with a drug and then that we tell him, you know, you have been doing a great effort to get out of it. So even God sees your effort. Okay. But the guy is still a drug addict. And he believes because somebody told him that even God sees your effort means something. It means nothing. Because... What God says is that when you know the truth, you don't struggle with addiction. Hallelujah. 
Am I right? When you know the truth, do you struggle with the addiction? You don't. So if you struggle with something, and then people are saying, even the Lord knows you are making effort, you must know that Sambala has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> they are prepping you for the next. Because in life, until you realize who is your altar, who is your conceptor, who is your chief, until you realize that your report is unto God and you must give an accurate report. Sometimes you will accept certain. Comment dit la légèreté? La légèreté. I have many French people here that don't know English. <laughs> huh? Priorities? Huh? What? Like, like, you, 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 from, you will be like, you, you, you will be, you don't, you don't let's say Ali. Okay. Mm -mm. You will be frivol, frivolity, like a, yeah, nonchalant. No? No? No Solange. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. So our lives must recover, put on the truth of Christ. If I struggle with smoking, it means the word of God has not penetrated my heart. That's why my heart produced the thought of smoking. For it says, out of the... Uh, Amen? So the thought to smoke is not something that comes from the restaurant or from the store. Because you may say, ah, I'm passing by this store because I saw the... I would call it... The cigarettes and the... the what is that? Advertisement, that's why I was attracted. Well, guess what? When you smoke, it is a spirit that gets you to do something that you do not want to do. For Paul says, the things that I knew to do, I don't do them. But the things I know, um, I, I knew not to do, I do them. But he goes further by saying, thank God that he has saved me. Hallelujah. So if the world tells you it's all right, God sees your effort. God is not looking, he's not interested in your trying. He's interested in your doing. He's not interested in your trying, he's interested in your being. The Lord Jesus does not, it's because of that, 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 remember, the tradition of man makes the power of God in you non-effect. So once you have accepted the tradition of man by telling you that, you know, even the Lord knows you, you, you're making effort. Then the power of the word of God that is supposed to transform you and change you becomes non-effect. Does it make sense? Because somewhere you have given a room to the enemy. Somebody say, I refuse. I refuse it. I refuse it. Every plant in me that you have not planted, uproot it. Uproot it. Today, uproot it. I refuse to be a garden of plants that were sold, put in by life, by things, by what's going on. Please go ahead. Read again for me from verse 7. Verse 7. You hypocrites, play actors, pretenders. Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, these people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, for they teach as doctrines the precepts of men. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said, Listen and understand this. It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that defiles and dishonors him 
But what comes out of the mouth, this defiles and dishonors him. Hallelujah. He said, it's not what comes in. Now, you know that many people are careful to what they eat. If they decided not to eat caviar, because they say this is a fruit from the sea. Some people, uh, they, they, don't, they don't interact well with uh, seafood, right? So when they see seafood, they automat automatically remember, this one does not work well with me. I don't eat it. So what comes in, they have good memory of not to do. But what comes from God, they don't have good memory. So for you and I to be able to continually please God, we have to assess, am I planted by the river? If I'm feeling dry right now, then that means I'm somehow disconnected from the root of the, uh, sorry, the, the stream, the soil, thank you, of the river of God. Because following God does not come naturally. He <laughs> doesn't. What comes naturally is disobeying God. You don't even have to, to try. It just comes. <laughs> Amen. By following God does not come naturally. So you have to have a new nature. Thank you. It comes supernaturally. You have to have a transformed nature, which that nature will now help you to follow him supernaturally. Other than that, the, you, you, it's, like, it's like you're toiling, and the more you're toiling, the more you don't see advancement. Because the effort will be from the flesh. And every effort that you invest with and buy and through the flesh cannot bring fruit. It's not possible. Because he says, it is vain that the worker, uh, that the builder build if, uh, if the Lord has not built. It is in vain they build. So meaning they are building. Amen. But since the law has not been in, even though they are building, they are not trying to build. They are not thinking to build. They are not planning to build. They are building. Right? He says it is vain. So they have made effort, and when they finish, they have finished with the roof. And after now, they sit down and they collapse. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're like, 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 like what, what happened? It is not what goes into the mouth of the man that defiles. This one settled the whole question about food. Because, you know, the Jewish people, they talk all the time about the, 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 the pork, the pork, the pig, the pig, the pork, the pork. It was ceremonial in the Old Testament to explain to the people how to keep themselves holy. It was not the fact that it was not something. It was not the fact that it was something that would cause them to be unholy. It was a foreshadow. It was a mere shadow to explain who to come. Because if what comes in you defiles you, then we are all defiled. Hallelujah. So Christ settled the questions and he says, do not be, he says, if you are more concerned about what you eat than what comes out of you, then you have a problem. Somebody says something, and he's like, no, no, in fact, I was not thinking it. Ow. <laughs> it came out of your mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the thought, that, Jesus, the Bible says that the heart of man is wicked above all things. Who can? 
Meaning you yourself, you, you, you did not know that you will come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you only caught yourself finding your heart. <laughs> and then you realize yourself that ah, this was not right. Verse 12. Verse 12. Then the disciples came and said to Jesus, Do you know that the Pharisees who were offended when they heard you say this? He answered, He answered, Every plant which my heavenly father did not plant will be torn up by the roots. Will be torn up, will be by, torn the up roots. by the roots. This is our message. Every plant, which my, amen, you got to say my, my heavenly father has not planted in me. Some plants, they came through frustration. Some plants, they came through disappointment, discouragement. Some plants, they came through abuse. Some plant, there is a lady who was telling me, every time we see each other, she's always telling me that she has been abused. So a language cannot even change because the plant that is in her is the memory of the abuse she had. When somebody has been through fire, of the enemy. And kind of all the time has on the tongue, he oftentimes indicates the issue has not yet been huh, resolved. There is a lady who preached. And she was always preaching with uh, what her dad did to her. Always. She started ministry. And all the time she was saying, well, my dad molested me. My dad you know, abused me, raped me, yada, yada. And then when she was saying that, the people listening were like, oh, oh. So people started gravitating around her. Based on the feelings and the emotional attraction. Are you know what I'm saying? So she built a ministry on emotions. So flesh was attracting flesh. And you had a congregation of flesh. <laughs> then one day, the Lord rebuked her. By telling her if she does not stop to abuse the Lord. <laughs> to misuse this happening. He will take her out. And she did it more than 35 years. Can you imagine? Uh, in front we say, 35 Bones and me, 35 good years, she did the same thing over and over and over. By the day the Lord told her, huh, this is the day of your day. If you don't quit, I'm going to quit you. Hallelujah. There are things in us that the world has planted. And it's fighting the ways of God. So we know it's fighting the ways of God. But how do we get them out? Well, the word of God gives us a simple, simple principle. Keep the word of God on your lips day and night. Simple. Let it be in you like a... Um, a replay. A loop. David said, How ah, can a young man not sin against thee? By what? Hiding your word. In another word, 
is continually remembering the word. Until that word forms in you and that word sets you free. I told to somebody. I told her, she said she cannot sleep. That regardless what she tries, she cannot sleep. She's in Africa. So I thought she might be born for the United States <laughs> because, <laughs> because she sleeps in a time where it's reversed. Meaning when it is when it is day here, over there is what? Night. So she can't sleep. So I'm saying so she's 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 she she's 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 made for the United States. <laughs> Hallelujah is the way of saying it. Anyway, so I told her, listen, because you cannot sleep, I'm gonna give you a posology, a <laughs> I'm going to give you a prescription, a spiritual prescription. If you follow it, your problem will be solved. And she was wondering what I'm going to tell her. And I say, every time you cannot sleep, take the Bible, read. He is as if I told her, go that. <laughs> In two days, she found sleep. <laughs> I wish you won't be sleeping, but then, by then she will, she will be knowledgeable of the word of God. <laughs> I, as, I, shall, I, I must find something else to tell her to read the Bible with. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just to avoid to read the Bible, she found sleep. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that we ought to use that word to keep it on our mouth. Continually. Continually. Lord, you said, because I can tell you, when it comes to the activities of the enemy, in order to cause you to fall, or to cause you to leave, or to cause you to be dry, or to cause you to be discouraged, or to cause you to be offended, it, it, the activities, they, they, are, they, are, they are ramping, and they are, they are charging, and they are consistent. But if you don't let in you the word of God, but you have a mix of the word of God and the tradition of men or what men did tell you in order to sympathize with your emotional distress, what happened is that you will not be recovered. That's why I say every plant that my Lord did not plant in me, I give him Full permission. Full will. He said, I am at your door. And I, he was not on the door of the pagan, right? He was on the door of the church. Am I right? He was speaking to the church. He was at the door knocking. Can you imagine? They are in church, they are praising God, but Christ at the door. That's a problem. That's, that's a big problem. The, <laughs> the, the law says that he inhabit the praises of his people. So they were praising God, but Christ was at the door, still knocking. But it says, if any man hear it, my voice, and Open. What happened? I shall come in. And I will dine with him and him with me. This is how it works. What is the food of the Lord? Tell me. The word. So if he dines with you, what would happen? You eat the word. And when you eat the word, what happens? Huh? You are free because you will be filled of it. You will be charged of it. That's why, personally, I refuse to have knowledge of the word of God only. 
I don't need that. I don't need to be able to quote every part of the Bible. And then people will like, wow, you are wise. I, I don't need it. The last time somebody got this, uh, uh, what to compliment, this compliment, his name is who? King Solomon. Somebody came from Ethiopia, the queen of Sheba. And she like, wow. You are wise. Next day, <laughs> his wisdom <laughs> brought him into whatever. Hallelujah. He did exactly what he knew not to do. The Bible said that he built for his um, um, wives and concubines. Idols. And altars, and he himself went there to sacrifice. C can you imagine? And yet he was sitting in wisdom. So you got to ask yourself, Simon, what, 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 what was wrong with you? <laughs> Come on. You have the wisdom, you know who God is, and you go build altar to your concubines and your wives and then you give offering to what you know this is not of God so I realize that knowledge only does not do anything I need two things I didn't do it let's take the book of Peter, second, second Peter. Second Peter, let's read from verse three. Uh, chapter 1, Second Peter chapter 1, thank you. Second from verse Peter 3. Chapter 1, starting from verse 3. Mm -hmm. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Through, 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 and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through, through, personal knowledge of him. Through and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. But notice, he will not stop there. So continue. Verse 4. For by this he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value. So that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom. So by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world. In the world. Because of this reputable desire. Because of this reputable desire. And become sharer. And become sharer of the divine nature. Listen, this is the promise of God. That we can become sharer of his divine nature. To have the same mind like. Christ. This is not a story. This is not a report. This is a promise. This is a plant that he wants to plant that will bear fruit. But there is something you got to do. Verse 5, continue. Verse 5, for this very reason. For this very reason. Applying your... your your diligence to the divine promises. Make every effort. Make every effort, effort in, in exercising your faith. In exercising your faith, faith to, to develop moral to excellence, develop moral excellence, excellence and, and in moral excellence and in moral excellence knowledge knowledge insight understanding insight understanding and in your knowledge and in knowledge self control ay, 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 self control which is them 
King Solomon, he had knowledge, but he did not develop self-control. Are you what I'm saying? That's why I say, I do not want knowledge only. Because I can know that this is idol. But if I don't control myself to worship the idol, I will worship the idol. Hallelujah. So to know is one thing. And to apply moral excellence in order to exercise my faith so that I be planted by God is another thing. And in your self-control, what? Steadfastness. Steadfastness. What does it mean? Consistency. Pushing through. And in your steadfastness, what? Godliness. Godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly affection. Brotherly affection. And in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love. In your brotherly affection, develop Christian love. That is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for their benefit. Uh, develop Christian love. That is, learn to unselfishly seek, seek the, the best for others and to do things for their benefit. Huh. Hallelujah. This part says, when you give or you do and you want to do because the person has been gentle to you, the Lord God calls it what? Pharisee. It says, if your love does not surpass these of the Pharisee, then your love is nothing for it. Thing. So that's why? As I add unto the plant of the Lord knowledge, I add self-control. I add brotherly affection. I develop a love that is making me to unselfishly seek the best. For others. But these things don't come naturally. Do they? They don't come naturally. We have to work them out. For work out your own salvation. With fear and trembling. I must do it. Because God says so. I must accomplish it. Because he said so. Even if. People don't see me. God sees me. Now, where is God? And in us. So meaning, by the time I am about to move, God tells me, don't go there. Am I right? So I can hear the voice of God telling me, don't eat this. And yet, I take it and I eat. So meaning, I consciously, that's why if we have plants that are not planted by God because we have allowed them, they have to be uprooted. Up, uh, uprooted. And the doctrine, teachings, Consideration, knowledge, understanding. There are even a type of faith that doesn't come from God. For our faith must respond, uh, as a respond, must rest upon the power of God. So let God plant you durably. The word durably means that cannot fade away. 
that can resist uh, tear and wear. Durably means that you will get hit, but you will function. Hallelujah. Because you are durably planted by God. Do not let the oppositions of this world and the challenges of this world take away your value in Christ. So for this reason, add to your knowledge. Go back to verse 5. For this very reason, applying your, your diligence mm -hmm. to the divine promises, mm -hmm. make every effort in exercising your faith. So first, when you understand the promises of God, I will be at the head and not at the tail. Exercise your faith with. Amen? Because these are the promises. So exercise your faith to it. I shall be at the head and not at the tail. So if I find myself at the tail, I must exercise my, my faith in it in order to get out of the tail. I will be transformed. I will be new and renew. I will be a new person. That's a promise. So when I see the hold of me coming back into the plant of God, then I know it does not belong there. I exercise my faith. I'm not the whole. Hallelujah. So I'm exercising my faith on the divine promises. Making every effort for it. Develop what? Moral excellence. What is moral excellence? You know, we had started a business somewhere. And I spoke to a brother and I asked him, I want you to go in this place and open the business for us. But... This is what I want you to do. Make every effort to refuse anything that has to do with bribery. Whether consciously or unconsciously. Meaning, you yourself make sure that the information that they give you, it is accurate. So do not simply swallow it. Research. and make. So I told him, this is ow, 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 ow. We call it moral excellence. Are you what I'm saying? And then, unfortunately, he did exactly what I told him <laughs> not to do. And I'm thinking, <laughs> human is human. <laughs> so, another brother comes in and he says, well, what you can do is that you have simply to make an amendment and remove him from the company that was uh, built. And I say, my moral excellence does not permit me. Because I knew that by the time it was built under it, there was bribery. Which I told him not to buy it. So even if I change and I remove him, still the build of this company was because somebody bribed him and he said yes. Are you what I'm saying? This is a moral excellence. Why? Because it will be, it will be, it will, it will, it will be, if you want, understandable to say, okay, I have already invested money. I have already put in effort. So instead of uh, demolishing everything, just readjust. But remember, don't put the new on the, don't put the new on the, hold. It will be a waste. Because tomorrow, when we become billionaire, and they find out that's where it started. Hallelujah. The entire billionaire va, va, va devenir pauvreté. <laughs> Hallelujah. So moral excellence is not, is not that... You are, you are, I would call it, you are self-righteous. Moral excellence is that the word of God says, make sure that even if somebody accuses you, that even, even if, because the devil accused, right? But if they do, make sure that it's not based on a basis that is factual. So that you be of clear conscience. 
So your moral excellence will help you to refuse to let the enemy serve you on the plate. And add to it knowledge, insight, understanding. Verse 6. Verse 6. And in your knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control. And in your self-control, steadfastness. And in your steadfastness, godliness. Hallelujah. And in your godliness, brotherly affection. Mm -hmm. And in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love. We're going to stop here. Amen. I want you as a child of God. He said this, keep this word continually on your mouth. So I would want you to remember this word, Second Peter chapter 1, starting from verse 1. And continually tell, Lord, you have asked me to partake in your divine nature. For the word of God says this. Verse 8, he explained what happened when you don't develop this. Go ahead. Verse 8. Verse 8. For as these qualities for are yours, these, quali these qualities are yours, yours and are increasing, increasing where in you, in you as you grow, grow towards spiritual maturity. maturity. What happened? They will. They will keep you. They will keep you. They will keep you from from being useless and, and unproductive. In, in regard to the true knowledge and greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. However, verse 9. Verse 9. For whoever lacks this. For whoever lacks this. Quality. This. Quality. Ay, ay, ay. Is. Blind, short-sighted. Uh, short-sighted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, it says, whosoever lacks this qualities. So whosoever is who? Anybody. Anybody. The Pope included. <laughs> because some people believe that the Pope is infallible. Whosoever lacks this qualities is blind, short sighted, closing his spiritual, his spiritual eyes. eyes to the truth. Amen. Amen. And what happened? Having become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Are you what I'm saying? Yesterday I was a liar. And Christ cleansed me. And I forget that he cleansed me. What happened? I will lie again. You know, sometimes... Liberation, freedom, and deliverance only comes by the memory of the truth in you. Let me explain. If somebody has been promoted police officer or officer of the army and he gets hit by a bullet and he gets into the hospital in the coma for a long time and he comes out even if, if, if he has lost memory, it does not mean he has lost his badge. Are you what I'm saying? Even if he lost memory, it does not mean he lost his stature. Now, what he has to do is to recover the memory of what he has already. But if he does not remember that he was a police officer before he went into coma, even if he has a badge on him and a criminal comes to him, he won't do nothing because he would think that he's nothing. Are you what I'm saying? So the power of God that is in you, you must remember it. Your sins that were cleansed, you must remember they were cleansed. They're no longer part of me. A brother told me, he said, he said, where you come from? I said, Avery Coast. 
He said, ah, how did you do? And then you got in the United States. Because they used to say, in the way of talking, they used to say that the over there is difficult to come to the United States because of the ancestor does not want you to prosper. <laughs> so he says, but how did you do? I said, because those ancestors, they have nothing in me. He said, ah. <laughs> it's a way of saying, you got to remember who you are in the Lord. You got to remember that if God said that he has cleansed me of something, it means I am. So the only thing that will happen to me is the devil that will come back to remind me, hmm, remember when you were so, so, and so, 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 and so. Hallelujah. You see, something that is interesting is that my past is what? Past. Is, thank you. It's not my future. It's not my present. But devil, his past, it is his present. It is his future. <laughs> because the day they kick him out from heaven. Until the future, he is kicked out. He shall be in the lake of fire. So truthfully, the liar who comes to me and tells me, who do you think you are? This is what you were doing. This is what you were. But the Bible tells me that I must make sure that the qualities of producing from the plant of God are developed so that I may not forget that I was cleansed from my hold sins. Other than that, I will fast, I will pray, but it won't work because I do not remember that I was already bought with a high price. I must remember. I was already bought with a high price. You know, oftentimes, I have to remember that my wife is my wife. Yes. Sometimes, I'm sitting and I'm looking at my phone and I see a picture and I say, oh, this is my wife. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Because meaning, by the time I see the picture, it does not click wife. Is a five seconds after I say, this is my wife. Yes. You have to continually remember. Sometimes when I get out of the house, I don't even think about my children. I even what I'm saying. When you are busy in certain things and then you go somewhere. You're not, you, you, you're, not, you, you're not outside, and then you're like, hey, Kayla, hey, Julie. Am I right? You don't spend your days thinking about your children. So you have to remember your children. So if you go in the store and you see something, what happened? You remember your child. Sometimes you don't go in the store because of your child, meaning you don't go, you come here. You don't go in because you are thinking that you would buy something for your child. You are going to just buy something random. And as you enter the store, you see something and automatically you remember your child. So remembrance is important. If not because of it, you won't even buy and go please or surprise your child. That's why the Lord Jesus says, re Remember. It is oblivious fact that I was cleansed from my old sins. I must remember that. 
I was cleansed from my old sins. Therefore, I can only produce godliness. Hallelujah. Because the only thing that was preventing me to produce godliness were my sins. So therefore, if I was cleansed from it, then I can produce. Let's pray. Put your hand on your belly. For the Lord Jesus says, out of your belly shall come rivers of living waters. The things that come out of you, the Bible says it is what defiles you. But if you have the right thing in you, you will only bring out the right things. Hallelujah. So you want to call on the name of the Lord over yourself. For God to fill you this very moment with his rivers of living water because you got to tell him, Lord, it is now that I need to be planted by your rivers and I shall not go dry. For whatever the challenges will come my way, whatever the adversary will come my way, even when the storm comes and take my feet, I shall not go dry. Because out of me shall come your rivers of living waters. People will draw from me, that will draw from my life, and I shall not go dry. Because I am planted by your rivers. I am wet in your rain. And I continually increase in you. And I have from you the things that come from thee. And I cannot go dry. I shall not go dry. I am plentiful. I am multiplying. I am increasing. And my old ways are no longer my ways. My old me is no longer my me. My whole thought I no longer my thought for I am increasing in your knowledge. I am increasing in your godliness. I am increasing in your temperance. I am increasing in your sanctification. Oh God. I pray that out of me comes plentiful Rivers, so that others will drink out of me and see you in me and see you through me and see you in me and see you through me. Let my inside be washed by your water. For the water that came out of your rib at the cross must and will and shall wash me and cleanse me by your blood. Even Lord God, cleanse me now. So I receive from thee the memory of who I am in thee. So I receive from thee the memory of who I am in thee. That my life from now on be planted by you. My thought be planted by you. My soul be planted by you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen.